Hello and welcome to this Cubase Q&A video where we're going to take a look at transferring your colour settings from one version of Cubase to another. So this was in response to someone who wants to move their Cubase 8.5 colours to Cubase 10. A perfectly reasonable request but as we'll see it's one which you can only really do uh, with a bit of text file editing. So I strongly suggest unless you think ah, this is the thing for me that you you go and watch something else because i don't want to waste people's time but there's going to be a bit of code editing and um xml and and stuff like that so let's just take a look so what we've got is keybase 8.5 so we're just going to run that and while that fires up, I'm going to describe what we're going to be doing. So Cubase settings are all done in uh, XML files, which are extendable markup language files. And they allow all sorts of settings to be maintained, basically an infinite number of things to be uh, maintained. And let's just open up any old program. So this is obviously Cubase 8.5, just as a demonstration. And... Here we can see some colors. So what I've done just to make it really obvious which colors we've got is I've just called what was called color nine hideous. So I'll take color 10. And then we can rename them in the project colors. So I'll call you, you know, example, etc. that kind of thing. And most importantly, if you want these to be available to multiple projects, etc., as a default, you can set them as a default in this window. Uh, so I'm just going to set, save the current set as program defaults for reasons we will see in a bit. But basically, let's just take that your default colors that you get with a new project are the ones that you want to have transferred. So that's pretty much it for Cubase 8.5. So I'm going to close that down. And then we will look at where we need to be. So the issue with this is that these are stored in XML files, which generally are in a fairly consistent place, but it's different between uh, Windows and Mac, as you'd imagine. So looking on Windows, we can see they're on the C drive users, the username that you log in as, in my case, Darren, obviously, app data, roaming, Steinberg, uh, Cubase, the version, and then underscore 64, because it's 64 bit. You may not be able to see the app data folder. So if we go back to the user folder, you can see actually, actually uh, a hidden folder and if you can't, then you just need to go to Organize, Folder and Search Options, View, and then um, Show Hidden Files, Folders and Drives. I'm not sure where it is in Windows 10. Uh, it's it's fairly similar. I'm sure you'll be able to find how to view hidden files if you search for that. So this is where the Cubase 10 uh, settings are, but Cubase 8's there. So we go to Cubase 8, 64, and the file we're after is defaults.xml, which depending on your computer and what programs you've got installed, if you double click it, it may well open up in, of all things, Internet Explorer, which isn't particularly helpful. So you can't really do much with it in here, although at least it does format it in a kind of sane manner. So it's got something to go for it, but obviously uh, Internet Explorer, etc. we won't go on a tirade there. But oddly, a really useful way to view these is another piece of Microsoft software called VS Code. So this is, Microsoft's really good free code editor. So if you haven't got it, I will put a link to it in the description, but it's free to download. And even if you just want to edit occasional HTML files or anything like that, any kind of file, it's really good for that. It's a really nice text editor, uh, really good for programming. I've been using it for Python and JavaScript and HTML and CSS and so on. It's very good. So I'm just going to load that up now if you've not switched off already. And here, what I've done in Visual Studio Code, I've loaded up the two different XML files. So I'll, I'll run through how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is close all of those, and then I'm gonna open them. So this is the bare Visual Studio Code window. I'm gonna open up one. So I've gone open, then I've gone to the folder where we were just now. So Cubase 8.5.64, and then gone to default. So this is where those colors are stored. So gone default XML there. And then I'm gonna open up the Cubase 10 version. So just go into the Cubase 10 folder and again, open up default XML. 
So now we've got them both open. And one of the many nice things that uh, Visual Studio Code has got is the ability to look at files side by side. So we click that. And this one, if we hover over that, you can see that's the Cubase 10 version. And then I'm going to close that. So this one is the Cubase 8 version. Now, to make it nice and easy to find, I, I knew the name of one of the colors. So I'd called it Hideous. And then I can just search. So you do Control F for Find. And then we'll type for Hideous. And there we can see the values of our colors. And we can see also example, which you saw me set in the other video is also there and we've got all 16 of our colors now one of the many things which can be difficult to do with this is you can end up um, screwing things up by not taking a whole set of xml tags etc so a really useful part of this again if at any point you're bored there's loads of uh, there's loads of good videos to watch on youtube so you know feel free to go uh, to go and watch something else <laughs> But um, one of the really useful things of this is you can collapse any tag. So if we hover over this minus here, that collapses all of that entire tag into just these two lines. So if we want to copy it from here and paste it into here, which we do, then we can do that really easily just by collapsing that tag. You can see it was all selected and it'd be really easy to miss part of this. So this is a really nice tool for doing that kind of thing. So there's that. Now, we need to find the same thing in the Cubase 10 defaults XML. And the way we do that is we're going to look for this P color controller because there's only one of those in the whole XML file. So that's a nice, unique thing. So again, I've clicked in the right hand pane. I'm going to find P color. And we can see we're already there. There's only one of them. It says one of one. And here we are. So I'm going to scroll to get those to be looking fairly similar. And now we can see we've got this list name and then we've got all these colors. And again, I can just collapse that. So now what I'm going to do is copy that there. So I'm highlighting all of that and then control C. And then on the Cubase 10 one, I'm going to highlight all of that and control V for paste. And that's done it. So now we can look in there. We can see we've got hideous, an example, etc. And now I'm going to save defaults.xml. And now we're going to run Cubase 10. Now, before Cubase 10 gets to run, before if you do this, make sure you back up your defaults file. Okay, one good way to kind of do this. Well, obviously you want to back it up, but if you leave VS Code open, then you can always go back if you've screwed up. So let's just create an empty project. We'll just put it in there. And now when we go to our color palette, if I hover over that one, you can see it says hideous. I hover over that one, it's example. So it's copied those colors over. So there you go, that's how you do that. Now, if you wanna do it on a Mac, it's exactly the same process. You can actually download VS Code for the Mac. It looks pretty much identical, except it's a little bit nicer font wise. Um, the XML files are in your user folder and then under library, preferences, Cubase 10 and then defaults XML. So what I'll do is I'll just put a screenshot up now showing you where those are on a Mac if you wish to undertake this action on there. Again, obviously, I know this has probably been a bit of niche and there's maybe three people in the world who will want to do this, but... I did say I was going to answer some questions and that's where we are today. So I hope you found that useful. I say, please make sure you back up your defaults file before you start messing around with it because I don't want people to have, you know, Cubase that doesn't run, etc. But if you ever want to trans, you know, transfer your colors from one version of Cubase to a new one at the moment, that's how you can do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.